Turn with me into your Bibles to the book of 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. As you're turning there, you know many athletes, they like to show gratitude to God when they do something good. You know, like when they hit a home run or score a touchdown or they, when they win a race, they like to show God some kind of thankfulness. And there's a story, there's a, an account of former Indianapolis Colts kicker Matt Stover who learned to give God the glory even in defeat. During the first quarter of Super Bowl 44, Stover made a 38-yard field goal and he promptly pointed to the heavens like so many athletes tend to do. However, in the fourth quarter, with the game on the line, Stover missed a 51-yarder. He shanked it to the side and ultimately costing his team the game. But once again, he pointed to the heavens. That action didn't escape notice. The sports announcer made note of the action, lauding Stover as a spiritual man. Grateful for divine blessing and success and failure, victory and defeat. Our reading is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And here Paul is writing to a group of people who are experiencing quite difficult circumstances. They were facing intense persecution that was affecting them in all the places that hurt most. Their families, their livelihoods, and their futures looked really uncertain. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them were struggling to praise God even in the difficult times. And so we find Paul writing them a letter, and he gives them just this little blurb of encouragement. It's not very long, but this little blurb of encouragement is packed full of truth and a wonderful reminder of things that we can be thankful for when we're struggling to find praise. So if you haven't already, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first thought that I see we can be thankful for, we find in verse 13. And that's, that's we are beloved by the Lord. He loves us. He can't wait to spend time with us. We are his pride, his joy, his chief concern. When God set to make the whole universe, He made all kinds of amazing creations. The beauty of this world is just absolutely staggering. And even in our own little world here in central Pennsylvania, we can find beauty in just about every turn. Not many weeks ago, my family, or I had the privilege to be able to host my family here. They got to come all the way over from Greenfield, Indiana. And so I was so excited to have them, and, and uh, Kara was also so excited to have the in-laws. It was just a wonderful time. She was. She was actually very thankful. She liked having them over. But as they were here, it was interesting. They couldn't believe how beautiful this area was. They just kept mentioning how gorgeous it was, the rolling mountains, the vibrant colors of the leaves at that time, and the picturesque little farms dotting the countryside. And though we might live in a place that looks like a postcard of some sorts, God didn't stop with the landscape. He made all kinds of creatures too. Some stunning, some fiercely intelligent, some with capabilities that just seem otherworldly. And yet, all of these amazing things that God created, and yet, we are the pinnacle of His creation. We are his magnum opus. We are his gem. We are the only part of his creation that he wants to have a deep relationship with. And God has intervened in the lives of humans more times than we can count. We can find instances all over just the Bible 
of God directly stepping into the lives of his people. He worked in the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He guided Moses, Joshua, and Caleb. He gave wisdom to David, Solomon, Josiah, and Asa. He transformed the lives of Nicodemus, Zacchaeus, and the woman at the well. And he spread the gospel to the entire planet with the likes of Peter, John, and Paul. I could spend the whole rest of this night just on this point, listing all the various names of God stepping into the lives of. But you know just as well as I do that God didn't just stop working in the lives of people in the Bible. but He's worked in your life as well. There are some here tonight whom God has brought out of extreme financial difficulty. There are some here tonight with children sitting next to you that you thought you never would have. There are some here tonight who have been rescued from the clutches of death only by the hands of God. And there's only one reason why. You are beloved by God. God loves you with all of his being. And he loves nothing more than to work in your life and mine. Secondly, we can be thankful because God loves us so much that he made a way for escape for us to avoid the eternal punishment for our sins. I love what Paul says in this verse. He says that from the beginning, God had chosen the Thessalonian believers to salvation. Now that's a big statement. Paul is saying that before the foundation of the world was laid, God had the Thessalonians chosen to be saved. But guess what? We are too. In fact, in 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 4, it says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men saved, not some, not a few, but all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants every single one of us to come to a knowledge of Him. It means that as he was forming the mountains, as he was digging the valleys, as he was filling the oceans with water, as he formed man in his own image, he already had a plan of salvation made. He knew the sacrifice it would take to create mankind. God knew the sins that would be made and he knew what it would take to atone for those sins. And yet he made us anyway. He knew the pain that he would have to go through. He knew that he would have to leave the splendors of heaven to live like one of us. And yet, he did so anyway. You know, he could have made this ultimate sacrifice for anyone he wanted. Maybe only just the good people. Or he could have made it for only people who gave lots of money to charity and to the church. He could have made this sacrifice available to only people of a certain race, social status, or personality, but he didn't. He didn't. He made it available to you and I. You and I who spat in his face. You and I who chased after our own lusts. You and I who rejected him, but he made it available to us anyway. God is no respecter of persons. He has chosen each and every one of you for salvation. Oh, but Paul isn't done yet. He teaches us that we can be thankful because we're called. You see, not only did God choose us to salvation for him, but he called us as well. He made sure that we got the message. To the Thessalonians, God sent Paul. And to us, he's given us a call as well. You know, we're blessed in this church to have had so many opportunities to hear the gospel of the truth, the truth of the gospel. And even in this past year, we have seen multiple instances of people coming to these very altars and seeking God, some for the first time, some maybe for the second, third, or fourth. I don't care what time it has been for you, but we have seen some who have found God and found salvation right at these altars. We've seen miracles happen right here in this church because God has called us. 
we can be thankful that God has given us an opportunity to hear his word and respond. And now we get the chance to be a part of that call. Listen, friends, the burden for our community doesn't just rest on the shoulders of the pastor. But that burden to see souls won for Christ should be shared by each and every person who claims the name of Christ. Each and every one of us should be engaged in some capacity to bring others to Jesus. You know that great commission where the command to go out into all the world and spread the gospel was given to everybody. Perhaps that's an intimidating thought to you. But don't let it stop you. It's actually an incredible, incredible opportunity that the God of the universe wants to use little old you, little old me, to be a part of his magnificent plan. We can work right alongside our Savior to take part in eternal goals. And that brings me to my last point, our last thought for thankfulness. We can be thankful because this isn't the end of the road. We have something else to look forward to. As amazing as this world is, as amazing as all the creations that God has made, it's only a dim reflection of what it will be like in glory. Those who believe will share in Christ's glory when he comes to restore justice on the earth. There is coming a day where there will be no more sadness. There will be no more pain, disease, heartache, stress, loss, death, or sin. And there is coming a day where we will look back on the trials we face in the present with greater clarity. We may not know why. We may not know why we're going through whatever we're going through. We may not know why we're going through a battle at the moment. But there's coming a day where we will. There is coming a day where we can see everything uh, through as a, as a clear glass I'm so thankful for that tonight. We may not know why it seems like the devil is fighting on all sides, but there is coming a day where we will. We may not know why we're experiencing loss, why we're experiencing famine or struggle, but there is coming a day where we will. And Paul's thanksgiving was based on the conviction that the Thessalonians genuinely had responded to God's call and possessed a faith that leads ultimately to the sharing of the glory of the Lord at His coming. All that remained for Him was to encourage them to persevere. And tonight, my job is the same. If you've responded to the call of Christ, and you're walking in all the light that He's given you, then I encourage you to persevere. There's coming a day where you can look back and know that it was all worth it. In this Thanksgiving season, I hope that you're taking special time to thank God for all your many blessings. We truly are an extremely blessed people. And that doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. Sometimes the holidays are maybe the most difficult times to praise God. Holidays remind us of anniversaries of certain moments in our life that we don't want to remember but even in those times, even those times where it's difficult to praise, we should do so any, anyway. Where it seems impossible to thank God in the circumstances that you're in, when those times come, or maybe you're in those times now, I want you to remind yourself of these truths. You are loved by God. You are chosen by God. You are called by God. There's coming a day where you will be glorified with God. If you're able, stand with me as we're closing in song. The musicians are coming. And I'd like us to sing this simple little chorus, God is so good. I want us to sing just four verses, starting with God is so good, then I love him so, and he answers prayer. And then I want us to go back to God is so good. We're going to sing it a cappella. God has truly been so good to us. There's so many things we can be thankful for. And I'm so thankful for God's working in my life. So thankful for how he's working in ours. And I'm also thankful 
He's not done yet. He's still going to work in your life. I praise His name. God is so good. so thankful for how good you've been to us. You've been such a wonderful God and we have so much to praise you for. Lord, I pray that as we leave this place that we would leave with hearts full of thanksgiving and may you be glorified by our lives. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>